Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind this YouTube channel, Nonconformist Conscience. All right. So I wanted to make a video going over Mars ingress into the sign of Taurus, where it will be square to Pluto exactly on the 11th. Before I dive into that, I did want to say Gemini's, you still have your birthday special going on. Come see me if you want to. You can get a natal chart reading and your solar return for $75. It's 90 minutes. You book that on my website and it will send you a Zoom link and me and you will meet and we can have a session to go over what your evolutionary purpose and intention is. And then also what could be coming up for you this year um, as seen through your solar return chart and how to utilize and consciously work with this energy. So again, that's only $75. You have 11 days left to book this. You can book this for whenever. You look at my schedule. Um, you don't have to book it for before the 20th. Um, you can book it for after the 20th. It just has to be booked by the 20th. So I wanted to put that out there. And then on the 20th, it's going to transfer over to Cancers. And I am excited to meet the Cancers once I put up that birthday special. If you want to be updated on this, you can go to my website. I will post a link below in the description. And if you go to my forecast and teachings page, when you get on there, uh, it will automatically pop up to subscribe. You put in your email, you subscribe to that, and that way you will get the email that says whenever there is a new special or a new birthday special, and you'll also receive the written forecast that I write. I also did a written for a small written report just for this Mars and Taurus transit. So let's dive into this. Mars is going to be in the sign of Taurus until July 20th. And Mars is our conscious desires, whereas Pluto, our soul, they can be our subconscious desires. And whenever there's something that we're wanting to evolve through, uh, a good Mars transit will trigger new desires to come into our consciousness for us to work with. That way we can proceed on our evolutionary journey. So what is Mars and Taurus indicative of on a desire level? Well, Mars in Taurus is coming out of the sign of Aries. While Mars was in Aries, before it conjunct the North Node, we were understanding what our old patterns were. And there were desires to break free of these old type of patterns. Looking at it wherever it was in your natal chart, it'll give you an understanding in tandem with your own natal Mars. But as Mars crossed over the North Node, it initiated a new cycle of new patterns that are meant to be created through understanding what it is we were desiring. And now that Mars has ingressed into the sign of Taurus, I feel like this is really beautiful energy because when Mars is in Taurus, it is yin energy. It's an internalized type of energy where one is meant to really go within and to kind of um, understand when, where, and how we are meant to um, kind of go into hermit mode a little bit so we can really start to pay attention to what's going on inside of us. And that's so we can do the Taurian dynamic of our inner listening. So Mars and Taurus is about being in, internalized in order to understand what desires are we supposed to be working with? What desires are we meant to act on? And 
when Mars is in Taurus, this is really the need to be internalized is stemming from the Taurus dynamic of really understanding what is in alignment with our values. So a Mars and Taurus transit can be where one has desires that are emanating from within that are in direct alignment with our own personal values and the need to be self-sustaining and self-sufficient in getting after those. But it takes the internalized process of connecting with that. And this is really beautiful if you think about how Jupiter and Venus and Mercury just came out of the sign of Taurus. So we've been coming to understand about our relationship to self, what our values are that resonate on our own individual level that are pertinent to our relationship to self. Mars and Aries was, these are old patterns that are wanting to be eliminated on a desire level. And now something new is wanting to be birthed, but it was instinctual and one doesn't really know what it is. And now that it's in the sign of Taurus, it's saying, hey, let's pump the brakes. Let's come back down to earth and let's really tap into our inner voice. What desires are being sparked within you that are, res are uh, resonating with your own values and your own beliefs? What is feeling authentic for yourself? Mars now in the sign of Taurus is ruled by Venus and Gemini. And this speaks to when we act on the desires that are in alignment with our own values and we are becoming more self-sufficient and self-reliant on an emotional level through listening to our inner voice and what we're being called to do, we then get to act on these. And then with Venus facilitating this process in Gemini, we get to learn even more knowledge about ourselves that is now teaching us more about what feels authentic and in alignment with our own values and our needs. And as Mars is approaching an exact square to Pluto and Aquarius, which was ruled by Uranus and Taurus, this is where it's a first quarter square. There can be a need to act. It can be where one has a crisis in action. I don't feel ready enough. I don't know if I should act on this. If it is in alignment with your values, absolutely. The fear can come in because Pluto and Aquarius is, yes, it's liberating from what is the known and the familiar way of doing things. But we've been working on connecting with what feels natural to us, what's in alignment with our values as we've been discovering them. And with Pluto being ruled by Uranus and Taurus, this is where one can make a correct or uh, can make a lifestyle change. It's about really liberating from the values of others that we've taken on, South Node Libra, and then actualizing what it is we're, we're really desiring to do that is structured around our own values as a way to create a lifestyle change. And as we make this lifestyle change, Venus will give us more knowledge through that action, Mars, as a way to internalize it, to create more inner knowledge and self-awareness. Uranus and Taurus ruled by that Venus and Gemini as well. So there's a couple of things that I want to speak to about this transit as well. And I'm going to show you the chart. As Mars entered Taurus, Mars is conjuncting the south node of Chiron, which Mars was just conjuncted not too long ago, uh, transiting Chiron. And so this is where if we are acting on desires that are in alignment with our values and we're sustaining that and we're being determined, self-determined to follow this. What it can do is it can really help us to heal old wounds around self-esteem issues of where we didn't act on 
things that were in fact in alignment with our values in the past where we possibly had abandoned ourselves seeing as the lunar south node is in libra it's conjunct the south node of mars in this chart speaking to where we might have abandoned our own values and desires to act on those in order to act on desires that were projected expectations of others. And so this Mars transit is doing a couple of things. One, it's helping us liberate from this dynamic scene with the south node of Chiron, Mars conjunction, square to Pluto. Also, where we might have acting on the expectations of others instead of being self-contained, self-sustained, self-reliant. Now it's giving us a new cycle of healing these dynamics on some levels. So that way we can take in ever more layers of deeper knowledge to become inner knowledge, Taurus, that can really help facilitate in the process of self-esteem issues of where maybe we were living for others and not for ourselves in the past. Um, again, going back to the south node of Mars, conjunct the south node of um, Libra, south node of Libra, Mars, south node of Chiron, and Taurus, both ruled by Venus in Gemini. The other dynamic that I want to share with you is that this is where we get the opportunity to, if we have been living for others and understanding that we've copped out on ourselves, so essentially living a, a living lie, um, by being one way in front of others and then behind closed doors being very different, there can this can facilitate in a deeply healing process. And so as we do this, this is also really beautiful Mars is technically still in conjunct Lilith, um, but Lilith is at 29 degrees retrograde in Scorpio, ruled by that Pluto in Aquarius. So this is a repeating signature of when we act on what feels natural to us and, and in alignment through the internal process of connecting with what it is we're desiring to do, checking to see, is this in alignment with my values, who I've been understanding myself? It helps one to liberate from the old dynamics of self-abandonment, if that's something that you've been doing. It also helps in facilitating the process of a lifestyle change that can create a transformation um, by doing something that's in alignment with yourself on an internal level, it can transform your external situations. But it also has the propensity as you're doing this Chironian work of healing these dynamics. It pulls in not only the square to Pluto, but Pluto being Lilith's ruler. Where are you then? This becomes an inner resource that now you get to share with others. Scorpio, South Node, and Libra as a way to cultivate healthier self-esteem by living your truth, by living your authentic nature, by living in your own natural values, by living in the type of lifestyle that you're wanting to live in instead of maybe living for others if that's something that you've had a hard time with. Also eliminates seeing as Chiron is in Aries and the south node of Chiron is conjunct Mars, square Pluto. The dynamic of where we felt like we needed to prove ourselves to another person instead of proving our, our own convictions to ourselves, right? Mars and Taurus helps us to have sustainment to reach our goals. It can be slow and steady. It's naturally trying Capricorn. It's naturally trying Virgo. So through aligning ourselves and acting on the desires that are in alignment with our values, we get to heal these dynamics I'm talking about, but it helps us pull in Virgo, improving upon ourselves even further through the counteraction of action to receive feedback, to gain ever deeper layers of knowledge, Venus and Gemini, and then also to be self-determined to do so. That is the natural 
shrine from Taurus to Capricorn. So it's really facilitating and pulling in this um, whole dynamic of where we get to be our own authority and we get to self-sustain that. We get to become more self-reliant through just aligning ourselves with the values that feel natural to each one of us. So I wanted to do this short video and talk about this. Um, I will be doing the weekly forecast tomorrow or the next day. It really just depends. I have a couple of other things, but I did want to put this video out there. If you're someone who wants to read this, I'm going to post the link below. And yeah, I just, I feel like this is a, is a, is a great time to learn more about how we can naturally feel like we can survive by living in our own values that feel authentic to our nature and how that can actually not only become our inner resource, but it can be a resource that we can share with others where we can be a natural role model to others through living our lives authentically and in alignment with our own intrinsic values and needs and self-sustaining that. So it's throwing off where maybe we were living for others and their values or their expectations. I feel like I talk about this a lot because that South Node is in Libra, but it's also something very pertinent within the culture of our society. A lot of us have experienced that dynamic of doing for others instead of living for ourselves. And it's great to be of service to others, but... We don't want to abandon ourselves. And so if you're someone who's experienced that phenomenon or is needing to really reconnect with your own inner voice, Mars and Taurus gives us this breath of fresh air to really do so. It's really reflecting this energy. The one thing I do want to say with Mars and Taurus square to Pluto and Aquarius is take the time to slow down this week. Take the time to ground into your body, to uh, be objective about what's going on, how you're talking to yourself, what is coming up into your consciousness that you're wanting to act on. This is a time where we could be also learning more about our own survival issues of where maybe we've experienced trauma around survival and so it's giving us the push to become very self-reliant in a healthier way um so this is what i wanted to say about this week not this week about this mars transit um it's getting late here but i wanted to make sure that i put this video out i uh would love to see more of my gemini friends and also thank you to all of the people that I've been working with. I, I just, I love what I do. I feel like I say that every time, but I, I want to just say that, um, you guys give me a career that helps me to survive and to sustain myself. And it's something that I am super passionate about. And <clears throat> I, um, I just have a lot of respect and reverence for those of you who give me the opportunity to read your chart. And I feel like it is such an honor and a privilege. So more about this week will be coming out either tomorrow or the next day. And I can't wait to see you all then.